What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 28th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here towards the end of March and heading into the month of April in 2019. So without further ado, do guys let's just hop right into it and talk about what happened today in the overall market starting off here with the SPX the S&P 500 the 500 largest publicly traded US company so we ended up closing off the day today up about ten dollars and seven cents up nearly 0.4 percent 0.36% to be exact. So a nice little green day there in the S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing the day exactly as high as the SPX at 0.36%, up $91.87 at the close. And the NASDAQ Composite here, guys, up $19.50, nearly $19.20 or uh, $20 at the close, nearly up 0.3.26% to be exact here at the close of the market. So, not an eventful day, not too crazy of a day, but nonetheless, it was a green day today in the stock market. So let's just hop back over here to the S&P 500. We can do some analysis on a bunch of different time frames so we can get an understanding of where the markets are pushing, where we could potentially be headed tomorrow so we can plan out our trades accordingly. So Quick little uh, rundown here with supports and resistances. We all know by now, especially those that have been watching the videos here for uh, you know a couple weeks, couple months, and even your new viewers that have been here for a couple of days, we've been talking about these resistances and support levels on the S&P 500. One of them being at about $2,790 to $2,800. The next one being at around $2,815. And the next one being at around 2860. So we saw the pop a couple of days ago up to 2860. The strong sell off where we broke below the support at around 2815, making it a new resistance again. And we started to trade between the 2790 support level and the 2815 resistance level here over the past couple of days. And if we hop over here to the five day, five minute, we can see exactly what I'm talking about on a closer term basis. We can see the pop of 2860. We sold off below the 2815 level, making it a resistance again, and we held above the support at around 2790. Thus, we're trading between, you know, this horizontal channel here with a slight little break to 2825 a couple of days ago. So, that is the, you know, the price action right now in terms of the SPX on a longer term basis and here in the smaller time frame charts as well. So another thing I want to point out to you guys, and we talked about this a bit yesterday, is the lower highs that the SPX is making on this five-day, five-minute chart. So we can see, again, the high at 2860, the next high at about 2830, the next one at about 2822, and we actually made another lower high today at about 28.18, and we ended up closing the day at yet again another lower high at about 28. 15. So what is this telling me guys on a smaller time frame basis here? The SPX is seeming like it wants to push down. This seems a bit bearish because like we talked about in yesterday's video, if a stock, an ETF, a future or an index is making lower highs, you know, that is a descending pattern, right? But the, on the flip side, if a stock ETF index or future is making higher highs, that is an ascending pattern, that is an uptrending pattern. But then if you look down here, you see we're also making higher lows, right? We can see the low at about 2788, the support where we ended up holding above we saw the double bottom mat on the 25th of March, and we ended up making a higher low today at about 2800 So what is this doing? 
This is putting us in a wedge pattern here on the S&P 500. And let me show you guys a couple of different things that can happen here tomorrow. Really two different things that's really going to show us the direction of the S&P 500. So the key breakout pattern that I'm going to be watching for, I'm sure you guys can probably guess it, is for us to break out of this resistance, out of this downwards trending trend line that I just drew out for a bullish move to the upside, right? If we were to break out here, let's say we ended up opening up 10 points tomorrow to the green. Let's say we started running up from there. That is a good sign that we are running back up on the S&P 500 and we're solidifying the push. And at that point, if we were to break out of that wedge, um, you know, this downwards wedge here, this would show us a further confirmation of the uptrend on the longer term chart here and we can solidify the bounce on the 50 simple moving average at that point right because as of now we've been consolidating on the 50 SMA but we haven't really seen a full on bounce a full on push out of that 50 SMA support and out of the 2815 resistance that we are currently at. So if we hop back to that five day, five minute for the second scenario that could potentially happen, let's say we get rejected by this, we continue to push down tomorrow, let's say we open up five points to the red, something like that, and we end up breaking the support of this wedge, which again is right here, that's going to be a pretty bearish move and we're going to be looking to test this level of support from there at about $2,800 and from there we're going to be looking to test 2790 which we were able to hold above on three separate occasions in the past couple of trading days and if we were to break that level that's going to be super bearish in the S&P 500 and if we go to the longer term chart, if we were to break that level, like I just showed you guys, the next spot I would be looking to see the S&P go to would be roughly at about 2740, which was a previous resistance back in, what was this, the beginning of February in 2019. Obviously, we broke out of that level, making it a new support. So just keep an eye on those levels, guys, for the S&P 500. Super, super important on a technical basis there. In terms of the Dow Jones, like we said, up 0.36% on the day, up nearly $92 at the close. And we talked about yesterday how the Dow Jones was showing kind of a similar pattern to the S&P 500 of lower highs, but on a longer term basis, not just on the five day, five minute, like we saw on the S&P 500, where we see the lower highs here. The Dow Jones was making lower highs more on a, let's say a 30 day, 90 minute basis, right? We can see on a longer term chart, the high on the Dow Jones was at about 26,200. The next high was at about 26,000 flat. We saw another peak here at about 25,900. And now over these past two, three trading days, we've been having difficulties breaking out of this 50 simple moving average resistance. We're seeing a bearish cross right here, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, which is a bearish sign. And this could potentially be that fourth lower high where honestly if we were to get rejected and do something like this tomorrow that's going to be a super bearish sign for the Dow Jones industrial average so hopping back over here we can kind of see how bearish really it's looking like on a longer term basis and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago how this is more of a not really a traditional head and shoulders pattern because I understand how this is obviously a higher, um, you know, right shoulder than the left shoulder is here, but we could potentially be forming something similar to that, right? Obviously, it's a little bit of a different variation because this one's a bit higher, but you guys kind of understand what I'm saying here, right? The left shoulder, the head, and let's say we were to sell off aggressively, break this $25,500 support level here tomorrow and we were to test the next support level at about 25,200, which is roughly five, 600 points lower from where we are right now, you know, that pattern is going to be 
pretty much a head and shoulders pattern here on the Dow Jones, which is very bearish if we were to break down here. And this could institute more selling in terms of this index, which again is not going to be great for the Dow Jones in general. So that is what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones. Honestly, this is looking a bit more bearish than the S&P 500, with the, especially with that bearish cross that we are seeing right now today you know on the Dow Jones although you know honestly we did have a decent push towards the end of the market today we're still seeming a bit bearish on the longer term charts here so let's go over here to the Nasdaq composite guys to see what ended up happening today let's just start on the one day one minute just for uh you know a brief analysis of today's market action so we ended up opening up roughly at about 7300 we saw a nice spike to about 7370 then that huge tank down to about $7,300 flat. We saw the double bottom. Then we ended up closing on a nice little upswing, just like the S&P and just like the Dow Jones. And if we're just judging on a 30-day, 90-minute basis here, for the NASDAQ composite, we're seeing something similar, right? These lower highs are forming. It's seeming a bit bearish. We saw the 50 SMA cross below the 90 SMA, or not the 90 SMA, the 180 SMA, which again is a bearish sign. And we're seeing lower highs forming. The high at about 7,500, second high at about 7,400, third high, I guess you can say this is at about 7,390. And this right here, the fact that we're still trending below the 50 SMA, and let's say we do something like like this we get rejected this would be solidified as the next lower high which would make this very very bearish uh, of a pattern so in terms of the NASDAQ, let's just take a look at some longer term resistances here. I want to just quickly clear this drawing set because there's a lot of lines here. It might be a bit confusing. So let's just hop over here to the 180, draw out some fresh lines so we can get a better understanding of what, you know, the overall, uh, you know, sentiment of this is index is looking like actually no i don't want the 180 i want the 180 so let's see here so okay we topped that about 7500 that's a resistance there okay so it seems like we are holding above right now the 7350 dollar um support level which was a resistance from back in the middle of october of 2018 so keep an eye on this level if we were to break this tomorrow let's say we were to continue this bearish trend that we are currently on on a short shorter term basis in the NASDAQ, you know, we're going to break this level here in uh, this support. And the next spot we're going to be looking to be headed to is going to be, is it at about, let's say $7,300 because that does seem like it was a support. Let's see if we zoom in a bit here. We can see, yes, $7,300 was, was a support where we bottomed off once and then a couple of days ago twice. So that's going to be the level I'm going to see and be looking for. Are we going to break below if we do break the $7,350 level tomorrow? So just keep an eye on those levels. And of course, this 50 SMA acting as a resistance. If we do get rejected and do something like, let me show you guys, like this. This is going to be pretty bearish in terms of the NASDAQ composite. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the major markets today, guys. Just like the past couple of days, you know, it wasn't too crazy of a day, right? Sometimes when we have these swings in the market of 1.52%, either to the upside or the downside, we get really excited. It kind of spoils us because we like those days. They're super eventful. I'm not going to lie to you. I love those days, right? I love when the markets are roaring to the upside or the downside. But you have to understand there's going to be days where things are just flat out boring, right? The market goes up 0.1, 0.3%. You know, it's just an average day today. Today was one of those days. I'm not complaining, right? You know, I still love doing this, analyzing charts, trading, but of course, I do, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do, like the more interesting days where we're flying up 2% in the market, stocks are going up like crazy, going down like crazy. We can play, you know, uh, inverse ETFs, market ETFs, stuff like that. Those are more fun, but again, these are days where they're slow and they're going to happen, guys, throughout the week, throughout the months. It's just how the game goes. So let's talk about what I ended up trading today. And again, like you saw in yesterday's video, I was being patient yesterday, and that carried over into 
good today. I'm being patient still in terms of taking any swing positions. I'm still in NVIDIA holding those shares. I'm up about a dollar per share right now. Nothing too crazy. I have not yet added more money to that position. Just holding on right now. And again, let's just talk about what my plan is with NVIDIA very quickly. The idea here is to end up selling off at 185, add more money at about $180. And if we were to break the 50 SMA support tomorrow or in the coming days, whatever, that is where I would end up cutting my losses in NVIDIA. Ideally, down about 2, 2.5% from where we are right now. So that's the only swing position that I'm currently holding. So what did I end up day trading today, guys? Because I do day trade most of the days here in the stock market. I didn't see any action too much in the morning, but I did end up seeing a pretty nice pattern, a nice setup throughout the day in UWT. We can see UWT ended up closing up only two cents, but it did actually, you know, gap down towards the market open to about $16.52, and it traded all the way up to about $17.40. So although it really didn't move at all in terms of yesterday's close, it still had a pretty nice move throughout the day due to it gapping down all the way to 1638. So for those of you guys that don't know, UWT is a crude oil based ETF. It goes up whenever crude oil is going up in price. So let's just hop over here to crude oil very quickly and see some price action, um, you know, in terms of this future. So Let's go to the five day, five minute. We can see, and for those of you guys that have been following, crude oil did hit highs of about $60. Was it? Th that was the high, I'm pretty sure, right? Let me just hop back over here. Yep. It was the high at about 60, 30. We ended up seeing a, you know, a nice little resistance there and we sold off pretty aggressively all the way down to about $58.20. And this was actually this morning when we did sell off all the way down to that level. And we started to see a reversal pattern on crude oil heading into the morning. And this sell-off here is what ended up opening up that margin of profit on UWT. And the whole idea with my trade in UWT was I wanted to see if UWT was going to fill the gap from that resistance at the market close yesterday. If you guys recall, UWT closed at about 1740 and in terms of crude oil, that was right around here, right? Something no, it was that's not true actually. It was right around Let's see on the five day, five minute yesterday. <clears throat> let's see at the close yesterday. Yeah, right around here is where UWT and crude oil ended up closing. We gapped down, opening up that margin. <clears throat> and that is why UWT really gapped down pre-market hours due to this dump here. And the fact that we started to reverse in pattern, pushing back up, filling that gap, that is what caused UWT to push up and that is where I ended up capitalizing on it and you know as crude oil started to fill that gap back up UWT was following that as well and we started to see some nice price movement here in the morning I didn't get in here like I said I didn't catch any moves in the morning but I actually got in on this third dip or the second dip rather to about 1692 we saw that dip we popped back up and we started to really confirm a higher low from the previous. The uptrend at that point was continuing. Crude oil was still filling in the gap. So I got in roughly, I believe, at about $17 and I sold off on the cross here of the 50 above the 180 SMA or the EMA rather above the 180 SMA. I ended up selling off roughly at about $17.21. And we can see it wasn't too crazy of a move there. It was about a 1.1 to 1.2% profit. But let's say, for example, you're trading with $10,000, right? Let's say you take a position with $10,000. You guys might think 1% is not a lot, but 1% of 10000 is about a hundred dollars, right? So if you know, if I took a ten thousand dollar position, I would make a quick little one hundred dollars on that trade, really from seventeen up to seventeen dollars and twenty cents. So that's what I ended up doing here in terms of UWT. And honestly, that's going to segment into what I'm watching for 
tomorrow. I'm going to be watching closely UWT and Crude Oil to see whether or not Crude Oil is going to continue this push up to the previous resistance at about $60.30. There is one barrier. There's a resistance there before we do get to that spot, which is this 50 SMA. Let's say tomorrow we were to break out of this level. I think this can definitely run back up to $60.30. And if we were to test the next high, which is at about $61.30, UWT at that point is going to be up a ton. It's going to open up a ton of margin in that ETF. And that is why I'm going to be watching that one tomorrow. So speaking of ETFs, guys, gold futures today actually ended up dumping a ton. So gold is actually on my radar probably more honestly at this point than crude oil due to the massive dump that we did see in gold and I'm looking to see tomorrow if we can get a pull if I can get a uh, uh, what's it called a bounce back play on JNUG. So let's just take a look at the technicals here on gold. We got topped off at about 1320. Literally, this was yesterday or this morning. Yep, it was yesterday roughly. And we ended up gapping all the way down to about $1,295. And notice how this level is a support from back in the 14th of March. On the 14th of March, we were at this level. And also, back in January of 2019, this was a resistance level. And honestly, and obviously, since we broke out of that level, it became a new support. So we're holding above two separate support levels right now on JNUG, or uh, Gold Futures rather, which is very, very critical in my eyes for a position tomorrow in JNUG, right? So if we were to uh, confirm the bounce there, I think JNUG is going to be very, very good. And we can see, you know, on the one day, one minute, we've seen some strong consolidation right around that support that I just pointed out to you guys over the past, really, all day pretty much, right? All day today, we bounced and held the support, right? We held it here, held it here, we dipped below it a bit, but then we popped back up and continued to hold it from about 1 p.m. Eastern all the way to the close of the market, which was obviously three hours after 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. So gold futures are looking pretty interesting right now. And for those of you all that don't know, this is the ETF I'm interested in trading tomorrow, JNUG. This one, it took a big, big dip from about $11.67 all the way down to here, which again opened up that massive margin of profit of about 17%. So if we do get that rebound in gold, this one's going to be a very good play tomorrow. So Tesla, I talked about Tesla this morning. I really do like the way Tesla is looking right now. So we've been talking about it, how that it bounced and held the, uh, I think it was the 270, what was it, the 275 support roughly, and now it's looking to break out of the 280 resistance, which again was a resistance from back in the middle of October, and we're looking to trade it up to the 180 simple moving average here, which has been a resistance in the past. We can see both moving averages, the 50 and the 180, they've both been resistances, and now that we broke out of the 50 SMA resistance, we're looking to hold it as a support and ideally 280 as a support and trend up to the 180 SMA, which is going to put the shares roughly at about 288, maybe 287. And from where we are right now, that can offer a nice little 3-4% margin of profit. So Tesla, TSLA, I think it's very interesting here. And let's say we break out of this level and do something like that. Which, you know, I guess you can say it's a little far, uh, far of a shot right now because we are still at 278. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But let's say over this next two, three weeks, we break out of this pattern. This, you know, pattern uh, you can see from this trend line here, that's going to be a huge bullish pattern in Tesla. I'm going to be watching it very closely for a long-term swing trade at that point if we do end up getting out of there. So those are just three, four ETFs I'm watching. And let's say tomorrow we do end up breaking down like I talked in the beginning of this video. Let's say we do end up seeing a bearish move. TVIX, like always, guys, I'm going to be watching to play that one very closely because that's one that goes up when the markets are selling off. 
very interested, and, and really I play that all the time when the markets are selling off aggressively. So let me know down below what you guys are trading tomorrow. I would love to know. Are you swinging anything overnight? Let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does support me and supports the channel in general. And why not subscribe if you're not already subscribed so you can keep in tune with all of these videos, the market updates, trading updates, trading tips, investing, all of those different videos that I upload. If you're notified, when they come out, you can watch them right away and get that valuable information. So I thank you guys again for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.